Well, hello there and greetings. Mike Simmons of WPHowTos.com here. Welcome to this video. I'll be showing you how to build a website with WordPress step by step, start to finish. This video will be a little long because I want to include as much helpful information as I can to help you along your WordPress journey. I think you've made a smart choice in choosing WordPress because, in my opinion, WordPress is the absolute best way for most people to make a website. One of the great things about WordPress is that it does almost all of the coding for you. There's no need to be an expert at HTML and CSS and all that. So no matter if you are a total beginner, you will be able to build your own WordPress website and get it up and running online very quickly by following along with my video. On screen right here is the WordPress website that we will be creating. We will be using the 2012 theme which is the default WordPress theme at the time of this video. Now the nice thing about using a WordPress default theme is that you can be sure that your theme will always be updated to work with the latest version of WordPress. Now if you do plan on using another theme, no worries because 99% of this video will still apply to you. One of the many great features of the 2012 theme is that it's what's called a responsive theme. So no matter what size of screen people are viewing your website on, if they're viewing it on a netbook or a tablet like an iPad or something like that or even a smartphone like an iPhone or an Android they'll still be able to view your site content alright let's take a quick look at our site Here's our site's background. I uploaded an image that I found that has subtle patterns to it. But of course there are thousands of other images that you can use for your site background. Here's the header of our site. And I found this image on a site that I'll show you that literally has thousands of very high quality royalty free images that you can use for your website. Now we cropped this image to the correct size for the 2012 theme header and added these text overlays over at uh, pixlr.com which has a really nice free online image editor. We added our content to our home page using the WordPress visual editor which means there is no coding involved. We added some nice icons to the widget areas below the main content and both of these icons I've linked to other pages of our site so for instance if I click on the email icon here it takes us to our contact location page which we will configure and this contact form when your site visitors send you a message using this contact form they will also receive a confirmation email so it, we also configured an autoresponder into our contact form here's a Google Maps will embed and your site visitors can click on the little map markers and get directions to your location of say your business it'll probably be a little easier to find than, than Mount Everest of course here's our about me page and I took an image of myself and I cropped and resized it using the WP image editor over on the right is the sidebar with different widget content and these images that are in some of the widget areas I've linked to my WPHowTos.com site to open up in a new tab so if I click on the HTML5 image for instance it takes us to my WPHowTos.com site video page. Now here's a custom link we put in our custom menu if you click on it it will take you to the WordPress.org site and open up in a new tab. Now I highly recommend visiting WordPress.org there's tons and tons of great information on it. Here's our blog page which we'll configure with the featured images and a featured post. Here's our photo gallery. All these images I found at the free image site and if you click on an image it opens full size. If you click it it'll close again. Very cool. We'll embed a YouTube video. Alright so here's an overview of what I'll cover in this video. I'll give you some tips on choosing your domain name. Then we'll go through the process of buying your domain name and web hosting. I'll show you the company that I use for all of my web hosting and how to get a nice discount when you do purchase. We'll install WordPress 
an easy one-click process. We'll set up our website, which will include the initial WordPress settings, how to install and activate WordPress themes, how to install and activate plugins, how to add pages to our site, how to edit images, how to make a contact page, how to make a blog post, and we'll customize our website a little further and I will show you how to make a photo gallery, how to embed a YouTube or Vimeo video, how to make a custom menu, how to change the background of your site, how to customize the sidebar with widgets. I'll install and configure the Better WP Security plugin and we'll go about customizing the home page which will include how to make a header with the free online image editor located at pixlr.com. We'll add some free icons to our home page plus a whole lot more. Alright, the first thing you will need to do is choose what your domain name will be. Here are a few tips to help you with your decision. Now for most people the .com is what the preferred extension they would like for their domain name, but if that's not available and you do have a domain name that you would really want, you can use a .net or .org. Now, of course, if you live in a different country than the United States, say Canada, the .ca is what a lot of people want, United Kingdom, .co, .uk, and that sort of thing. You can use your business or personal name in your domain name. You can use a keyword such as a business in each city if you're local business such as seattleplumbing.com or plumbingseattle.com. You can use a product type as your domain name such as elliptical trainers trainersreviews.com or healthydiets.com. I wouldn't use a brand name though because generally they're copyrighted and you could get into a little trouble that way and have to pay a fine. I recommend the maximum of three to four words in your domain name just because it's a little harder re to remember if it's longer and that sort of thing. Now if a domain name that you really want is taken in the .com and you really want a .com, you can use hyphens in your domain name, but keep the use of them consistent. Something like this and not like this. Here is a really cool site that I use called instantdomainsearch.com. We'll go and check that out right now. And it does just what it says. If you type in a domain name of choice, it will instantly tell you if it's available or not. So it saves you a little time that way. And you can click on this and buy it at uh, whatever you have selected here. Right now it's name cheap and you can put GoDaddy or one of these other ones. The only ones I ever use are GoDaddy or Namecheap and mainly Namecheap anymore. So pretty cool site to find out if your domain name is available. Now after you've picked out your domain name, of course you're going to need to buy your domain name and get web hosting. So let's go over to hostgator.com and see the available web hosting plans they have. Now I can recommend Hostgator highly because I use them myself for all my web hosting. And the reason that I do use Hostgator and recommend them so highly is their support. I started out with another web hosting company before Hostgator and I wasn't too happy with their support so I switched to HostGator and I'm very glad I did by the way and I've also had the experience dealing with other support personnel of other web hosting companies because I do build websites for other people and I can say for sure that HostGator support has been the best experience by far alright so let's click on view web hosting plans and we'll see what HostGator has to offer the hatchling plan is the cheapest but it only allows you to have a single domain but you can certainly get that one if that's the way you want to go I generally recommend getting the baby plan because if you're like me and a lot of people once you get started with building websites you'll you don't want to stop at just a single domain a single website the business plan it does have a couple other options here and you can check that out if you prefer but I'm going to click on the baby plan now right here is where you'll type in your domain name that you want to purchase at HostGator. Of course if you already bought a domain at say GoDaddy or Namecheap then of course you'll click this button and type in your domain that you already bought right here but click this button again and then type in the domain that we already found out that was available at Instant Domain Search and it is available of course and it costs $12.95 per year at HostGator. Here is where you'll pick out the package type 
your billing cycle, that's the t length of web hosting you're going to buy, and of course you get the biggest discount the longer you buy your username, your PIN, your billing information. Now make sure that you do put in a really good email right here because you, they will send you an email which has very important information to log into your site, of course. You can use PayPal. Right here they offer some other options you can check out if you'd like. I'm going to uncheck the boxes. Here's the HostGator's default coupon code which saves you 20%. Here's a coupon code that I have, YourGator99, and this will save you an additional 5%, which is 25% off total. I do receive a commission from HostGator if you do use my coupon code. If you do find value from my videos and my other resources I have available, then I sure would appreciate it if you would use my coupon code if you are going to purchase hosting at HostGator. You won't get charged anything extra if you do use my coupon code. Now down below here, it'll give you all the information, what you're purchasing, and you get what you receive. There is a money-back guarantee of 45 days for a full refund. And domain registration, $12.95. Here's the discount. Now if you do prefer paying month by month, you can. There is another coupon code that I have that I would suggest using rather than the 25% off because it will give you the first month of hosting for one penny instead of 746. You do have to pay the full price of 995 after the first month, but if you do want to pay month to month, that's the way to go. But you'll get your biggest discount if you buy six months or longer. So I'm going to put that back in there. After you've decided what you're going to buy, of course you have to agree to their terms and conditions, and then you'll click create an account. I'm not going to do that because I already have a HostGator account and I don't need another one right now. What will happen after you click create an account is almost instantly HostGator will send you an email. You'll definitely want to save this email and what I like to do is just take this information here and copy and paste it into a text or a Word document and save it elsewhere for easy access also. Now if you did buy your domain name at HostGator when you bought your hosting then the, the name servers right here will be automatically connected to your domain name and you don't have to do anything. If you bought your domain name at GoDaddy or Namecheap for instance then you will have to do this yourself. Connect your name servers to your domain name. It's a simple process but I'm not going to cover it in this video but I have another video on my YouTube channel you can check out if you, if you need to. Now after it's been a couple hours, because that's generally what it'll take for your domain and your name servers to be connected, you click on the control panel link. Alright, so if you don't see a screen very similar to this, then you haven't waited long enough. You'll have to wait a little longer for your domain and your name servers to be connected. Now you won't see these little red, little red asterisks here and red lines here. Those are on there because I have something called lastpass.com that automatically saves all my login information if I choose to do so. Highly recommended guys, so you might want to check that out, lastpass.com. It is free. They do have a paid version which I use, which is $15 a year. I use it just because I like to support them. Alright, so just back to our email. Highlight and copy our password that HostGator generated for us. Paste that in there. Then you can type or copy and paste in your username. Then you'll just click log in. And that will take you to this screen right here, your cPanel screen. Now you can, there's a lot of different things on here. We're not going to go over any of that right now, but what we're going to do is install WordPress the easy way. So scroll down to the bottom of the screen under software services and click on this little icon here that says quick install. Quick Install is the HostGator uh, script that they have. It's a very nice script. It installs WordPress very easily. I suggest you have this Enable Global Automatic Upgrades checked too to keep that checked. So we'll click on WordPress under Blog Software. Now it'll tell you the version that, of WordPress that it is, it is installing at the time of this video. That is the current version. Generally it's almost always up to date to the latest version which is great. So we'll click on continue. All right, here's the URL that you're going to be installing WordPress in. We don't want to put anything in here. 
unless you want to install WordPress in a subdirectory we're not going to do that keep that box checked here I recommend that put in a good email now you can put your blog title in there you can always change this later I'm just going to type in this and for an admin user you can pick pretty much anything besides admin or I, your first name too probably isn't a good idea it, just for security purposes so I'm just going to type in easy WP there we go you can put your first and last name in there if you'd like I'm just going to click install now alright that didn't take very long now it's kinda of weird it says 99 percent instead of 100 percent your installation is ready okay we'll just click on this it'll show us our site as is and this is the default WordPress theme the 2012 theme and the default theme at the time of this video and this is the theme we're going to be using okay so it is installed I'm going to highlight and copy this password that they've generated for us there's our username and we'll click on this link right here and this is our WP admin login screen so I'm going to paste in the password and type in my username and then you'll just click login okay now we're at the WordPress back end or the dashboard and by the way they they should send you all this information in an email to the email address that you've picked out right here so you'll have this all this information in your email also alright here's the welcome screen I am going to dismiss that actually right now this is what's called the dashboard and you can actually rearrange this by left clicking and dragging the different elements to where you want in fact you can if you click on the arrow up here that says screen options you can take out uh, incoming links uh, quick press say and then you could add the welcome screen again if you'd like so we'll close that so you can play around with your dashboard a little bit right now I'll show you just briefly about WordPress themes Move your mouse over appearance and then click on themes now it says right here the current theme is the 2012 theme that's the that's the one we are going to be using but in just in case you want to change your themes there's a easy way to do it here now if you did buy a premium theme you'll click on upload and then you'll browse to the theme that you have in a zip format it has to be a zip file and you'll find your file and then click install now if you click on the featured tab this will show you some generally very nice themes that uh, are feet in the featured area of WordPress see it even shows the 2012 theme I've used this theme before the responsive theme it's a nice theme this one I, I I've seen before also you can even preview if you like like clicking on preview see it shows what the theme will look like if you install that I'm just going to close but we are going to use the 2012 theme so I'm going back to our dashboard the first thing we'll do is click on the settings tab now here's our site title that we picked out you can change that like I said I think I'm going to go back over here this is my sample site I'm going to close that out now here's our site as is now I'm going to take out the tagline which is right here under the site title and the WordPress address and site address the site address is where you want people to go to access your site so this is your your home page of your site now the WordPress address is where WordPress is installed the WordPress files are installed if you installed WordPress in a subdirectory or somewhere else then you'll have to put that URL in there if you installed WordPress in the web root or the public HTML which we did then these two URLs will be the same what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to type in www in both of these right here because I just like to have www in front of my domain name it's not really necessary anymore for people to access your site but I just like the looks of it so here's your email address you can change I'll just click on save changes we've got all this changed now click on the writing tab under settings uh, you can go over this this like convert some emoticons you know if you make these little symbols it'll convert, convert it into a smiley face and that sort of thing and there's different options here we're not going to concern ourselves with right here this is the ping list when you publish a new post not a page WordPress automatically notifies the following site uh, update services that way you know your posts will get indexed faster some people paste in you know 80 100 pinging addresses in here I recommend uh, I'll show you that I have a ping list that I use is what I recommend so I'm going to go to my site wphowtos.com and on the home page on the welcome post down below I'll click on updated ping list 
Here's the ping list that I use and recommend. It's, only, it's all you really need. Highlight and then right click and copy and then go back and paste all that stuff in there. Then I'll click update. I'll close out my site over here. Okay, so that's all we need for our pinging list. We'll come back to the settings in a minute, but now we are going to add some quick pages to our site to get the foundation of our site set up. So hover over pages on the left and then click on add new. First I'm going to put in the, the page I'm going to use for the home page of our site. Welcome to easy WordPress. Oops. Web sites. I'm a little typing challenged, but I get by somehow. <laughs> okay, welcome to WordPress websites, and I'm going to click publish. Okay, and then we'll click add new again. I'll put uh, my easy WP blog. This will be our blog page. I'll pl click publish. And we'll click add new again. We'll add a contact slash location page. Click publish. I like to add a bunch of pages, you know, if I know what they're going to be. You can add more pages later, but I like to get the foundation of my site set up. I'll show you why I do some of this right away. Then I'll click add new again. I'll add photos for the photo gallery page and click publish. Okay, here's our site. I'm going to reload and see what happens. Okay, we got rid of our tagline. We've got these pages that we put in here, but there is a few things that we need to do right away. First, let's get rid of this sample page right here. So let's go back over to pages and cl click all pages. Now you can g delete pages by just hovering over them and clicking on the trash. You can also delete them by clicking however many that you want, multiple at a time, multiple pages at a time. You can delete by under bulk actions after you've selected some. Click Move to Trash and then click Apply. We'll do that right here. I'll reload the tab. Got rid of the sample page. There's quite a few other things that we want to change. So first of all, right now you'll notice that the home page, there's a home page link right here. And we want this as our home page. And it's showing as a blog page. We want our site to be a static website with a blog page. We're going to change that right now. So we're going to go back to our dashboard and click on Settings, Hover Over Settings, and click on the Reading tab. See right now it says front page displays your latest post. We'll click the button that says static page. And for the front page we're going to select this page. And for our blog post page we'll click, we'll select My Easy WP Blog. Blog page shows at most 10 posts. You can put whatever you want in there, but I, would, I wouldn't put any more than 10 myself. Uh, syndication feeds so show the most at most 10 most recent posts 10 is a good number up to 15 no more than that for your RSS feed and you can I leave it as full text but you can put summary if you like this is for your RSS feed don't check this box unless you want to hide from the search engines we'll go ahead and click save changes okay we'll go back here reload the tab okay uh, it shows the welcome to easy WordPress websites as our home page and we've got the home and we've got leave a reply here. We want to get rid of that first of all. So we're going to go back over here. We're going to click on pages. I'll click on the easy WordPress pages, WordPress sites, and I'll show you one way we can do it. Well, actually, I'll just click on quick edit. Now you notice over here it says allow comments. I'm just going to uncheck that box and then click update. And go back over here, reload. We've got rid of the ability for people to leave a reply, but you'll notice like on the photos page, they still are able to do that. So let's go back to our pages. We'll just edit out the ability for people to leave comments on these two pages here. So put the check marks in the box next to the title. Bulk action edit. Click apply. Comments. Do not allow. And then click update. Okay, that should have got rid of the ability to leave comments on this page. We're going to go back to our home page. Okay, we've got our site set up as a static website with this as our home page. We have a blog page right here. But our site navigation right here, now 
we don't necessarily want this in the same order. Right now it's showing the navigation. This is called the navigation menu. It's showing the page links in the WP default page order. And perhaps we want to change the, the order of these pages showing on our menu. And the best way to do that is to make a custom menu. So we'll go back to our dashboard, hover over appearance, click on menus. First of all, let's give our menu a name. Click main and click create menu. Now we'll also want to select over here where it says theme locations. Click the drop down and select your main menu and then click save in order for our custom menu to show up. Now we have to add the pages to our menu so we'll select all the little boxes here and click add to menu and then we'll click save menu. Okay let's reload the tab. Okay so we've got our custom menu but of course we want to change the order and we also want this to be called our home and not show up here as with this long title here. So we're going to change both of those things right now. Okay, so all we need to do is just click on this little down arrow here to expand the box here. And now we're going to type in, instead of welcome to easy WordPress websites, we're just going to type in home there. This is called the navigation label. That's what shows up in the, the, the navigation menu right here. Instead of this, we'll have this called Home now. So come back here and we'll just uh, save the menu. And now we have our Home instead of Welcome to Easy WordPress Websites. So I'll reload the tab. But I'd like to have the Home over on the, on this side. And I just the, the, change the order just a little bit. So we'll go back here and we'll just left click and drag. And I'll drag Home up to the, it'll be on the far left. And I think I'll have the contact location on the, the far right. So we'll save the menu again. Reload the tab. And there we go. But I've just noticed that I forgot to add a couple pages. I need to add a, an About Me and the Videos page. We'll just come over here. Well, actually, I'll just come up here to the top or the black toolbar up at the top. You just hover over new and you can add a new post or new image or user, but we're going to add a new page. First, we'll add an About Me and click on Publish. And then we'll click on Add New again. Add a Videos page. Click on Publish. Now we'll go hover over appearance, go back to menus again, and we'll add those to, let's see here, what happened here? Did I forget to click publish on videos? Looks, oh, and it says draft, so I forgot to click publish, I guess. So I'm going to click publish on here again. There we go. Now that should be good. I'll go back over to menus, put a check in both these boxes, the new two new pages, and add it to the menu. And I'm going to put the About Me, I think, right next, right on the far left next to the Home. And I'll put the videos underneath the Photos page and I'll click Save Menu. And then we'll go back to our website and reload the tab. Okay, that's our custom menu. That, that's just about the way we want it. There is one other thing that I need to show you, though, that I'd like to add to our menu. Now there's one other thing that we can do is we can add what's called a custom link which will take you take someone to the, whatever URL that you want for your custom link. So I'm going to put in the wordpress.org as URL and then put in wordpress.org as the label and add it to the menu. If I want this as a sub item of one of my main menu items here, I can indent it just by dragging it over here like this and we'll click save menu. Go back here and reload the tab. Now you notice if you hover over this right here, the, the WordPress.org menu item shows up. We can click on that and it takes us straight to WordPress.org. But it does take us off our site and we don't want that. So let's go back and change a few things. First of all, we'll put WordPress.org right here as a main menu item. Then up here, right up here in screen options, click on that arrow and then Put a check in link target. Go back to WordPress.org. Click on the arrow. Check the box that says open link in a new tab. Click save menu. We'll go back and see what happened. And there we go. We have WordPress.org right here. If we click on it, it should open in a new tab. And sure enough, it does. Now our menu is the way we want it.
Alrighty, let's start with our home page of our site. Right now you'll notice that we, we have a sidebar on the right. The content is put there using something called widgets. But for our home page, we don't want the sidebar on the right. The 2012 theme actually has what's called a page template that has widgets below the main content, and that's what we want for our home page of our site. So let's go back to our dashboard and click on Pages. Then we'll click on Welcome to Easy WordPress. Oh, I'll click on that. That's our home page right here. Now over on the right under Page Attributes, you'll notice Template. And right now it's a default WordPress template for the 2012 theme, which has what's called the sidebar on the right. Just click on the arrow right there and, and select Front Page Template and click Update. And we'll click Reload and see what our site looks like. Now we've got rid of the sidebar on the right. The Front Page Template does have a couple widget areas, but it's below the main content, so we don't see them yet because we haven't had any content to them. But we'll get to those later. Right now let's start making our site come to life by adding some content to our home page. Let's go back to our dashboard. This is the edit screen for our home page, or what we're using for our home page. Now right now we're in what's called the visual editor. There's also what's called the text editor which allows you to use HTML code. It has different, you can see you can put in a bold, I'll put in a word, and then I'll highlight it then it'll wrap the code around it. But we're not going to use the text editor, so we're going to click back on the visual editor. Now if you ever use Word or any word processing software, then you're probably pretty familiar with all this. Uh, it does have quite a few features. If you click on this tab right here, it'll open up what's called the kitchen sink, which gives you even more features. So the visual editor has quite a few features uh, as it is, but there's a plugin, what's called a plugin, that allows us to have even more features for our visual editor. So we're going to install a plugin first of all before we start working on our content of our site. Over here on the left let's click on plugins or hover over plugins. Click on add new. Okay so what is a plugin? A well, plugin is basically just code that is added or plugged into our WordPress files that add functionality to our site. Plugins are one of the great features of WordPress, and there are plugins that do just about anything you can think of. I do recommend not having too many plugins because it will slow your site down. Just use the plugins that are necessary, but there's a lot of cool plugins. But right now we're going to do a search for Tiny MCE. Tiny MCE, and then search plugins. There's a few different options, but this is the one we want to install called Ultimate Tiny MCE. We'll click on Details. It's been downloaded you know, over a million and a half times. The rating is uh, very high. It's a really cool plugin. I've used it and I really like it. So I'm going to click Install Now. Then we'll click Activate Plugin. Now you notice over here on the left there's Ultimate Tiny MCE tab now. Let's click on that. Okay, these are the different button options that for our visual editor that we can put in. You can fool around with this if you'd like. There's so many different options, I've never used them all, but I'm going to put a few of them into our visual editor. So, font select, font size, cut, copy, cut, copy, paste, uh, the background, and horizontal rule that makes a line across the, the screen. And for these, I think I'll put, uh, leave those two in the front row, and we'll put these in row two just so everything's not on one row that'll be a little inconvenient I'll put these in row three right here okay I'm going to scroll down and add a few more I'll put the line break button for sure and the style select we'll put that one there I'll we'll put these in row three and let's see what else here We'll try the advanced image editor, put that in row three. We'll try a delete button, row three. I'll add an HTML code button. Insert YouTube video button, we'll try that. And insert media, we'll put that one in there too. And that's probably all we, uh, all we need for this video, so I'm going to click update button options. Okay, back to Pages. Click on Pages. And we'll click on the, our home page. Now you'll notice we have a lot more options on our visual editor, which is great. So now we're ready to add some content. 
I've got some content that I've already prepared prior to this video. I'm actually pasting this in from a Word document, so we're going to use this option. Now, if you're just pasting in from plain text, use this right here, but Word has put some inserts, some invisible characters, so it'll kind of mess up your site a little bit unless you uh, mess up the way the content looks unless you use that paste into Word. That'll get rid of those invisible characters. So I'll insert it into our page and I'll click update. I'll reload the tab. All right, great. We've got some good content on our home page now, but it needs something more. One thing that would make this page more visually appealing is to add an image. There are a couple sites that I mainly use to find free images, the royalty free images that you can use commercially, whatever you like. The two sites that I really like to use are right here. Here is this one right here, www.sxc.hu, Stock Exchange, I believe they call it. And this is the one right here that I've actually been using even more and more, pixabay.com. I'm going to copy that and I'll paste it into a new tab. Now you'll have to sign up for an account, which is free. You'll just have to, you know, verify your email address and that sort of thing. But I'm already logged in here, so I'll do a search. There are just tons of images on here, really high quality images. And on Pixabay, I believe they're all, all free to use commercially. So I'll click search. Now the top line up here is images you'll find at Shutterstock.com, and those are paid images. We don't want those. Right here is an image I found that I, I'm going to use on our home page. Just click on the image, and I'll click download. And then you can have a choice of what size you'd like. I'll choose this one right here and click download. And then you'll just save the file to uh, wherever you want to save it. Okay, so let's come back to our site. Now I'll have the cursor right at the very beginning here. Wherever you want the, the image to insert, you'll place the cursor there. So I'm going to put it right at the beginning. And I'm going to click on Add Media. And then I'll find our image. Okay, over here on the, the right, now you can put a title, uh, caption, alt text, all that sort of thing. We've got it aligned to the left. I'll just put align none for now just to show you and we'll insert it large size. And I'll go ahead and insert it into page. Okay, I'll click update. And we'll go back to our site and see how it looks. All right, we've got an image, but for one thing, it's, it's too big, and we also want to align it on the right and have our text on the left wrap around on the left, so I'll show you how to do that. Let's go back to our edit window and just click on the image and then click on this little icon that says edit image. Okay, we'll make this, make it 70% and we'll align the image on the right. Now there's an advanced settings right here where you can actually choose the specific size you'd like. All sorts of different things. You can put a border around that and uh, all sorts of things. We're just going to use the main screen here. So we've got it aligned to the right. I'm going to put none for the link URL. I'm going to click none there and then click update. And then I'll click update here on our on our page edit. Go back to our site. Very nice. You'll notice how the text wraps around our image on the left because we aligned our, our image to the right. Now if we aligned our image to the left, of course, the text would wrap around on the right. All right, our site is shaping up. Now the 2012 theme has an option for using an header image on the front page, which by default displays right below the menu and above this main contact. So let's make a header. Let's go back to our dashboard and under appearance, hover over appearance and then click on header. So right here is the suggested size for your header, 960 wide by 250 high, and that's the size we're going to make our header image. But I've already downloaded an image from Pixabay that we're going to use for our header, but what we're going to do now is type in pixlr, P-I-X-L-R dot com into your browser, and then click under Pixlr, open Pixlr editor advanced. Now Pixlr is a, a free online image editor. It has a lot of the same functions as Photoshop, but of course Photoshop costs, I don't know, $500 or so. So this is a great option to use if you don't want to spend all that money on Photoshop. We'll click on Open Image from Computer. 
Now here's the image that we're going to use for our header. We'll go ahead and double click on that and that'll open it up in Pixlr. This is an awesome image but it's just too big for our header. If you click on image and image size you notice it's 1280 by 960 but we need it to be 960 by 250 for using in our header. So the first thing we're going to do over on the right under layers let's double click this little lock here to open, unlock it and make oh, and you just have to make sure it's selected for the layer to show up. Now over here under image click on image and then click on canvas size and we'll make the width 960 and the height 250. Then click OK. Now up on the top under tools select the move tool which is right at the very top right here. Now you can just left click and hold and drag your image to what you want to show up in the canvas. So I'm going to make the peak of Mount Everest show just about like that. Okay, perfect. Now I'm going to click on file right here and then we're going to save our image to our computer and quality. I'll even make it 90 just because we want it as high quality as we can. Then I'll click OK. Then I'll go ahead and it'll, uh, another screen will pop up which you'll need to save your image and I'll go ahead and save it. Okay, image saved. Now we're going to add a text overlay to our her header image. Then you'll just click on the capital A right here. And then click anywhere in the screen on your image. And a little box will sh open up where you type in the text that you want to display. So I'm going to type in reach for the top. Okay. So you can rearrange, you can move the text around just by left clicking and holding. I'm going to make this a different font. I've There it is right there, Euphemia. And then I'm going to increase the size quite a bit. Now you notice it shows up off the screen. We'll go ahead and just drag it over here. I think I'll make it even larger. Maybe just a little bit smaller. Okay. And I'm going to make it uh, bold italic. Now you notice that the, the P is getting cut off here. What you do is put your cursor at the end of the text right here and then click the space bar and there we go right there now click on color I'm going to you can choose whatever color you'd like so if you want to make it r blue there you go just what I'm going to do is make it white by typing in FFF FFF oops three six F's click OK OK excellent now we're going to add some effects to our text so just right click under layers make sure that the text layer is selected and then right click on that and click layer styles now there's a d bunch of different options you have we're just going to use the drop shadow now click on drop shadow to open up the uh, configuration box here now you'll notice right now that the drop shadow is kind of pronounced and it's a uh, way out there we don't want that I'm going to change the distance to say 4 and that looks pretty good and I like it black you can change the color of the text shadow I'm just going to click OK one thing to say about uh, the Pixlr editor it's similar to Photoshop like I said now it, it's used making layers so is one one on top of the other the bottom layer of course is at the bottom now if I put if I clicked and dragged the bottom layer and put it on top of this layer and then of course the the text won't show up because this is the top layer now so I'm going to go ahead and do this again you can add other images on top of images you can put images on top of each other and all sorts of cool things but right now we're just making our, our header so we're going to go ahead and click in here again text overlay I'm going to make the size a lot smaller and I'll type in keep on keep keeping on keep on keeping on 
can just left click and drag these around if you want. I'm going to left click in here and put it right about here. I'm going to make it bold and I'm going to change the color by clicking on the color and making this white also. Okay. I'll click OK. Now we'll right click on Keep On Keeping On and click on Layer Styles again. And we'll add a drop shadow to that also. Click on the drop shadow and make the distance of the shadow less pronounced. I'll use 3 for this. Okay, perfect. If you do want to uh, move the text around, if you've already got, you don't, you can just click on the Move tool and you'll make sure that whichever layer you want to move around you have that selected so if you have reach for the top selected and when you left click and hold you can move that around to where you want we'll center this just just about right and then click on keep on keeping on and we'll try to center that okay okay so that's just that's good for our header so what we're going to do is save this image I'll just go ahead and click on save under file okay I'm going to click on save Okay, good enough. We've. I'm going to close out Pixlr. Uh, we don't need this anymore. We'll go back to our site and uh, our dashboard, and now we'll I'll browse and find the image that I that we just made under, at Pixlr to use as our header. Then you'll just click on Upload. I'll just uh, select Skip Cropping, Publish Image As Is. Now we'll go back to our site and reload the tab, and there is our header image. All right, very nice. Now we do have the option to hide the site title, which is right here, and the tagline if we had one. So let's go back to our dashboard and then scroll down to the bottom of the page, header text, just uncheck this box right here, save changes, go back to our site, reload the tab. Okay, now we don't have a site title. I think I like it better with the site title showing, so I'm going to go back and undo what we just did. I'll go back and check the box again and click Save Changes. I'm also going to change the font color of the uh, header text, the site title, to match somewhat this blue right in here. Now, how am I going to do that? Well, I have something called Colorzilla. Uh, installed. It's on a, a Firefox plugin. It's also available, I believe, on Google Chrome. So Colorzilla, very, very cool extension for Firefox and Google Chrome. I'm just going to click on that to activate it. Now what Colorzilla does is wherever you place the cursor, it'll m put the hex code and the, the RGB code right here for the color. So I'm just going to hover the cursor right about in this blue right in here and all you do is just right click and it's copied to the clipboard. So we'll go back to our dashboard and then select color. I'll go ahead and highlight this and paste in that color that was put in our clipboard by Colorzilla and then I'll save changes. Reload the tab. Alright, so now our site title matches this blue of our header. Now why don't we have a custom logo instead of the site title? Now the 2012 theme doesn't have a default option to use a logo, but my next video I have planned will be about customizing the 2012 theme further, and I will include how to install a custom logo, among other things, so stay tuned for that video. Alright, before we finish our home page, let's take a look at the background of our site. Right now the background is just the default off-white color. We're going to, going to go back to our dashboard. Under Appearance, we'll click on Background. Now you have the option to use an image or just to select a color for your background. First I'm going to paste in a color that I've already picked out. I'll click on Select Color and I'll paste in the, the, the hex code of the color I picked out and I'll click on Save Changes. And it shows a preview right up here on the top of the screen here. We'll just reload the tab. Alright, I like the blue of, this, of our background now. I think it looks better than the default off-white that we had. Now we also have the option to upload an image to use as our site's background. The two sites that I showed you earlier have hundreds, probably thousands of very nice high quality images that you can use for the background of your site. You can also do a web search for free website backgrounds and find many, many free background images to use. Let's just go back to our dashboard and I'm going to browse to an image that I already have on my hard drive. 
Here's the nice one I have picked out. I'll double click on that. Now I just click upload. Now you'll see, you see how this is what is called tile. This is a really large image, so it's not going to show up like this. Down below, now you'll have some display options showing up, and I'm just going to leave it the way they are right there. Position, center, repeat tile, which is what this is. Attachment scroll, and I'm just going to click save changes. I'll go back to our site and reload the tab. Okay, now we have that nice uh, image of the clouds and the ocean showing up as our background. Now I was going to demonstrate a plugin that I found that has some pretty cool patterns to use as backgrounds, but WordPress just updated uh, just a few days ago and now the plugin doesn't work anymore. But we have a plan B. <laughs> There's a website called Subtle patterns.com that I found that actually has, oops, I misspelled it, an E in there, actually has all the same patterns the plugin had. We're going to go to subtlepatterns.com. All right, now you see right here it says 348 patterns to choose from. You can scroll through the list or thumbnails. I've already actually uh, found one that I liked. I'm going to, it was on the plug, in the plugin it was called Square BG. And in this one, it's called Transparent Square Tiles. Now, you, you see when you hover your mouse over here, it shows you a preview. In fact, I can just click on this. Now, I don't know if you can notice, but this pattern right here is a transparent, as it says, so it lets the background color show through. And it has a bunch of little uh, tiles or squares of light and dark squares. So I've already downloaded this image, so I'm going to go back to our dashboard and click on Browse. Find the one that I need right there. And I'll click Upload. Now it shows a preview of what it looks like. And I'm going to click Save Changes. I'm going to reload the tab. And there we go. I don't know if you, you can see it on the, uh, on the screen, but it has a bunch of different little light and dark squares and a pattern here. So it looks pretty cool. I like it. So we're, that's what we're going to use for this site. Now remember, subtlepatterns.com, and you can find a bunch of them. Or you can just search online to find tons of different uh, images and textures and patterns and stuff you can use the background of your site. Alrighty, now let's add some content to the front page widgets. Let's go to back to our dashboard and under appearance click on widgets. Now right down here, front, first front page widget area, second front page widget area. These two widgets uh, will show whatever content we put on the left and right hand side respectively below our main home page content and these are only available if you use the front page template of the 2012 theme. Now over here you'll see all the widgets that are available with the 2012 theme right now. Now what you do is whatever widget you would like to use you hover your mouse over it now you left click and hold and then you just drag it over to the area that you would like the widget to show up in. I'll go ahead and close that. We'll go ahead and open up, we'll click the down arrow to open up the first front page widget area. I'll go ahead and drag a text widget over here. And I have the little dotted lines, you just drop it in there. And I'll go ahead and demonstrate. Okay, we'll put a title. And I'll paste in that HTML code right there. The strong uh, code, it's the, bit, the word big is wrapped in the strong HTML code which will make it bold. So I'll click save and we'll go back to our home page and reload the tab. Okay, now you see the content that we just put in. So cool, huh? So, but maybe you don't want to use all this HTML code and stuff. Well, remember when we did a search for that plugin that adds functionality to the visual editor for pages and posts? The ultimate tiny MCE plugin? Wouldn't it be cool if there was a plugin like that for widgets so you didn't have to mess with all that HTML stuff? Well, it turns out that there is. There is a very cool plugin that I noticed when I was doing a search for the Ultimate Tiny MCE plugins. It lets us use the visual editor for widgets. So let's go back to our dashboard, hover over plugins, and click on Add New. Now let's do a search for Tiny MCE again. All right, here is the one we're using right now, the Ultimate Tiny MCE. This is the one I noticed when I was doing the search right here, Black Studio Tiny MCE Widget. Like it says right here, it at, this plugin adds a what you see is what you get text widget based on the standard Tiny MCE WordPress Visual Editor. 
that is the one we're going to install so just click install now and then we'll click activate okay now let's go back hover over appearance and click on widgets again now you'll notice that we have a black studio tiny MCE widget available so we'll open up the first front page area and first of all we'll drag this text widget that we have in here we're going to drag it back over to the inactive widget area okay now we'll drag the black studio tiny MCE widget down to the first front page widget area and drop it in the dotted lines now you'll notice that we have it has the visual or the HTML which is called the text editor now in in WordPress we're going to use the visual visual editor anyway now you notice it has all the same exact options that we put in our visual editor using the ultimate tiny MCE plugin so how cool is that I am going to just put some content in here first I'll put a title contact me and then I'll paste in some content place the cursor inside the edit box and then I'm going to put control V for paste okay and I'll click save we'll go back to our home page and reload the tab okay now it's showing up down below here contact me this is the first front page widget area etc etc but it looks at you know that's very nice but let's add some visual appeal and we're going to add a icon image here is the one that I have used quite a bit it's called icon archive.com did I spell it right icon archive.com now it has a bunch of uh, tags you could click on if you'd like to see those I'm just going to put in email as a search and click search icons and it has a whole bunch here this is the one that I picked out to use for our site right here and you just click on and download it. I also did a search for video or videos and I found another one to use for our other widget area which is this one right here. So I'm going to close this out iconarchive.com I'm going to go back to our dashboard I'm going to put the cursor right here at the beginning of the text and then I'm going to click add media I'll just go ahead and drag this one into the download upload files insert media and then over down at the attachment display settings I'm going to align it to the left because I want the text to wrap around to the right I'm going to insert it uh, as a thumbnail 150 by 150 and I'll go ahead and click insert into post now I'll click save and we'll go back to our home page reload the tab all right we got our nice image here but you know what I, I want to change a few things first of all I want this contact me I want it over here on the right I also want this text to drop down a couple line or two so let's go back to our edit screen I'm going to just highlight and cut this contact me I'll place it right at the beginning paste it in there I'll hit enter to drop it down a little bit I'm going to highlight that and then I'm going to make this a heading three to make it bold and stand out a little bit I'll click save reload our home page and better but I would like to drop this down maybe just one line so we'll go back here and I'll put the cursor right in front of the beginning I remember our awesome plugin ultimate tiny MCE we're going to use the line break option again so I'm going to click on that once and drop it down a line click save back to our home page all right looks great there's a couple things I would like to do now before this widget area is finished I would like this if I click on this now it links to the image I would like to link it to our contact location page and I'll also link this text to the contact location page so let's go up here and click on the contact location link I'll highlight the URL and copy and I'll go back here first I'll click on this icon image and I'll click edit image and then down under link URL I'm going to highlight that and paste in the URL we'd like and click update and then I am going to highlight this text right here and click on the little chain link to insert a link and paste in our URL again and I don't want the link to open in a new window or tab so I'm leaving this box unchecked I'll click add link I'll click save 
We'll go back to our home page, reload the tab. Well, let's go back to our home page. And there's our widget area. I'll click on this link, this image, I mean, and it takes us to our contact location page. So does this text link. So this widget area is finished. Now let's configure our second front page widget area. So we'll go back to the dashboard. We'll close this one up and we'll drag the Black Studio Tiny MCE widget area down again. Oops. I have to open up. First of all, I have to click the down arrow to expand the second front page widget area. Then I'll left click and drag and drag it down to drop it in the dotted lines. Now we'll just configure this exactly the same as we did the other one, so almost exactly. I'm going to click our title and then I'm going to paste in some content that I have. I'm going to make this videos, I'm going to make this a heading 3. Right. And then I'll place the cursor in front of the very beginning and click Add Media. Put in my videos icon. And over down here we do want it aligned to the left so the text will wrap around to the right. I'll put it in as a thumbnail, 150 by 150. I'll click Insert into Post. And I will click Save. And I'll click on Reload the Home Page. And that looks pretty darn good. But we do want to link this image right here and this text right here to our videos page. Let's click on our videos menu link. Copy that URL. We'll go back here, click on this image. Click edit image. Now you can also, if you have the image selected, you can also click on the link right here. And I'll go ahead and just paste in the URL. And then that way you have the option to open the link in a new tab or not. We'll click update there. I will highlight this text right here and then click on the link again and paste in our URL and click add link. Click save. Back to our home page, reload the tab. Now we will click on this and it should take us to our video page and it does. And test that link out and it takes us to our videos page. All right, now we have our home page looking good and our site background the way we want it. So now let's add some content to our other pages of our new site. We'll just go right across the menu in order so the next page we'll configure will be the About Me page. Alright, let's go back to our dashboard and I'll close this one up and we'll go back to hover or click on Pages and we'll click on About Me. Now I'm just going to paste in some content that I've already got made up I'm going to go back to the visual editor, of course, and I'm going to use the paste from Word option right here. I'll click on this. A little bit too much spacing in between there, so I'm going to fix that by clicking backspace a couple times. And I'm going to click insert. And I'll update, go back to our page and see what it looks like. All right, now we have some text on there. Let's make the quote from that I have on here from Albert Einstein stand out a little bit more. I'm, first of all, I'm going to just highlight the entire quote. And then I'm going to click on these little quotation marks here to make it what is called a block quote. I'll click on that. Okay. And now I'm going to use one of the great options of that Ultimate Tiny MCE plugin which allows us to change the font size, which is a great option. You used to always have to mess with that with HTML code. I love this option. Okay, I'm going to make it uh, 18 font. And I'll click Update and reload the tab. All right, that looks pretty good. What I think I'm going to do is I think I will make this font just a little smaller. Oops, I forgot the quotation mark. There we go. I'll make it 16. Well, that doesn't look too good either, does it? Well, let's, we have a solution for that, too. We'll just go back here. I'll click the cursor right there and click Line Break. Click Update. And I'll click Reload. Perfect. All right, so now we have our text in here the way we'd like it, but it needs a little visual appeal. So. I am going to add an image of myself since it is the About Me page. So let's go here. I'm just going to place the cursor right at the very front. Click Add Media. And then I'm going to browse to an image of myself that I already have. And I'm going to align it to the left so the text will wrap around to the right. 
and I'm going to in insert it full size for now. So I'm going to insert into page and click update. All right, so here's an image of myself and it is aligned to the left but in the text to the right but it's way too big for one thing but before I resize it I would like to crop the image so that mainly mostly my face will show up so what we need to do first of all is go back to the dashboard and then click on media and then we'll click edit under the image we want to edit which is right there and then below the image click on edit image now displace your cursor inside the image just left click and drag and get the area that you'd like to show up and release the cursor and then above the image there'll be a little icon here to the left which is the crop icon just click on that and click save now we'll go back to our site and reload the tab now you notice that our cropped image doesn't show up what we have to do first of all is go back to our dashboard We'll go back to Pages and we'll go back to the About Me edit window. Now we'll select our image by clicking on it. Then we'll click Add Media. Now you'll see right here, here's our cropped image. So I'm just going to click on it to select it. And over on the left, we're going to keep the alignment to the left. And we'll keep it full size and insert into Page. All right, so now we'll update. Reload the tab. All right, so now our image is the cropped image it is showing up but, but it's still too big so let's go back and take care of that part now we'll just click on the image click on the edit image icon okay now we have a couple different options that we can use now we can just click make the image a percentage of, of what it is right now or we can click on advanced settings and choose a specific size right here. We'll just use the edit image you can also put in a border and all sorts of things and different to advanced le link settings but we're just going to go back to edit image and I'm going to make it 60 percent for the link URL I'm going to click none and then I'll click update I'll click update on our site click reload you know I, th I think I want it just a little bit smaller first of all so I'm going to click on that and then click edit image again and I'll make it 80 percent and then click update then I'm going to update there on our page. Go back to our site, reload the tab. Okay, that's about the right size I'd like. But now I would like to drop this text down a little bit. So what we will do, go back here, put the cursor in front of the text in the beginning, and I'm going to click the line break option. Maybe one more time. And I'll click update and see what it looks like. I'm going to drop this down one line also. Drop this down a line, and we'll click update, and that's just the way I want it. All right, so now, if you notice here on the right, this is what's called the sidebar. If you remember the page templates, right here, template, right, the About Me is, has the default template for the 2012 theme, which shows the sidebar content on the right. And we'll keep it that way, but first of all, we're going to add some visual appeal to our sidebar. And I'm going to add a couple of widget areas with images that link to my WPHowTos.com site. We'll go back to our dashboard, and we'll hover over Appearance and click on Widgets. First of all, let's get rid of a couple of these widgets that we don't want. I'm going to just click on the down arrow to expand and then click Delete. Okay, now I'm going to drag the Black Studio Tiny MCE widget over here. Drop it in the dotted lines and we'll leave it right there. And I'm going to configure it just the same way as we did the ones on the home page. I'm just going to paste in some text that I have or right there. And I'm going to place the cursor right there in the front. And I'm going to click on Add Media and Add an Image of the WordPress Warrior. I'm going to keep it aligned to the left over here in Attachment Display Settings and I'm going to ins insert it full size which is 125 by 125. So I'll insert into Post. We'll click Save. Go back to our About Me page, excuse me, and reload the tab. And that looks pretty cool. But there's a couple things I'd like to change. First of all, I'd like to make this text bold drop it down a line and then I would like to link this image right now if you click on it it just links to the image file I'd like to link it to my WPHowTos.com site so let's go back to our dashboard 
first we'll make this text bold then I'll place the cursor in front of it and click on the line break symbol drop it down a line and I'm going to click on the image to select it and I'll click on the link tab and I'm going to put in my link to my WPHowTos.com site there we go and then I do want this to open up in a new window or tab so I'll check this box I'll click update then I'll click save go back to our page and reload the tab and it looks great so far I'll click on the link to see what click on the image and it takes us to my WPHowTos.com site so perfect now I'm going to put in one more Black Studio Tiny MCE widget and another image, etc. and configure it just like this one here, but I'm not going to include that in the video for the sake of time, so I'll be back as soon as I get that finished. Alright, now I've got that second widget area configured on the sidebar of our default template, and I put in a, another image, and I link this image to another page on my WPHowTos.com site. See if I click on this image right there, it takes us to the videos page on my WPHowTos.com site. So we've got our sidebar finished. Now let's continue on and click on the photos page. We'll be adding a really nice photo gallery to our site, but first we need to install a really cool plugin called Next Gen Gallery. So let's go back to our dashboard. Now under plugins, hover over plugins and click add new. And then do a search for Next Gen. Next Gen like this. Search plugins. And there it is right here, Next Gen Gallery. If you click on the details. Now you'll notice it's been s downloaded like 7,500,000 plus times. It is compatible up to the newest version. It's a really cool plugin. So I'm going to click install now. Now we'll activate the plugin. Now you can see that we have a gallery tab over here on the left. Now there's quite a bit you can do with the next gen gallery plugin, but we're just going to do a basic gallery. So let's click on this gallery tab first of all. And then we'll click Add Gallery Images. So first we need to give our gallery a name. So I'm going to just going to call it Main Gallery. And I'll click Add Gallery. Gallery ID number one was selected. You'll, you can show this gallery in our poster page with this short code right here. So I'm going to copy that. That's the one we're going to need for to put insert into our photos page. And I'll put it right in here. And I'm going to keep this box checked right here. Scale images to max width 800 and max height 600. And then you need to choose a gallery. So you've got your main gallery right here. We'll choose that one. And then we're going to select the files we want for our gallery. I've got a whole bunch that I found on pixabay.com. So I'm just going to click on the first image and go down to the last and hold the shift button down and click on the last one and click open to get the images in here. Now I'm going to upload the images to our gallery. Now let's go back to our pages, click on that, and click on photos, put our gallery in there. I've already got it copied, and I'll just click on that. Now make sure you don't have any space for after or before the brackets right there. I'm just going to click update, and I'm going to reload the tab on our photos page. Now you notice we have a really nice photo gallery showing up here. Now if you click on an image in here, uh, the image will load full size. And then if you just click on the image, the image goes back back away. And I'm going to actually in, in put that text right in here too. So I'll go ahead and copy and paste that text in there. That. Oops. I don't want this to be bold. I'll do that. Okay. Click update. Alright, so you can rearrange the order of the images in your gallery. You just go back to the dashboard, of course, and click hover over gallery and then click on manage gallery. And we'll click on our gallery link right there. Now you want the page to be linked, page link to our photos page. We'll click save changes. Now down below here, where it says sort gallery, just click on that. Now you can just left click and drag. And you can oh you can ascending or descending in the order there. 
So start with this image now instead of this one. I like it the other way. And you can just left click and drag the images around where you would like them to show. Right there. And we'll just go ahead and up, update sort order. And click reload tab. And now the images are, the order has been uh, changed. Okay, so now we've got our photo gallery. So let's go to our next page, which is the videos page. All right, now let's embed a video on our videos page. Let's go back to our dashboard and click on pages, click on the videos, get the edit window for our videos page. The easiest way to embed a YouTube or a Vimeo video is just by placing the video URL right just right in the text box. Now it can be either the visual editor or the text or HTML editor. I'll paste in a URL of a video of mine. I'll just click update. Go to our videos page. And now you'll notice the video shows up is resized just the, the perfect size. And this is the easiest way to do it. Now I can click on the video and it will start playing. There is another way to do it. And if you, perhaps if you don't want what are called the related or suggested video to play at the end of this video that's what it'll show right now and you can also change the size if you do want it smaller even if you do want to make it a custom size you just go to YouTube find a video that you want to use and click on the share button and then click on the embed then you can just copy this code here now see you do have the option to show the suggested videos if you'd like and you could make them a a custom size or just any size you'd like right here. So that is another option. Now you, you'll need to copy this code right here and then you'll need to go back and paste it using the text editor, the HTML editor. We can go ahead and paste that in there and go back and reload our tab. And now it's just a little bit smaller. It's the 560 by 315 that we chose. I'm just going to put our URL back in there and do it the simple way. We'll click update and then I'm going to paste in a little content that I put uh, made up. Place the cursor in front, click enter, there we go. And I'm going to link this right here, the WPHowTos.com. I'm going to link that to my site. Oh, we're in the text editor right now, so we're going to go to the visual tab. And now I'm going to highlight this text and place a link to my site, which is right here. And I'll add the link. I forgot to open it up in a new tab, so I'll go back here. I'll just put the cursor in there and then click that. Okay, now we go open link in a new window or tab. I'll click update. And then I'll click update here. Go back to our videos page. We have the video, the, the video showing up in the correct size, and we have the text in there. So our videos page is finished. All right, now let's take a look at our blog page. We'll click on the My Easy WP blog link. Let's go back to our dashboard and click on Pages, and we'll click on our blog page, and I'll just add some uh, text. And hey, here's my blog and click update. Let's go back to our blog page and reload the tab. Now you'll notice that the content we put in there doesn't show up. And that's because this is a blog page. You have it's, The content has to be in the posts or articles that you make. Now here is the default post that WordPress leaves in here. Like it says, this is your first post. Edit or delete it, then start blogging. Now you notice right here it says uncategorize. WordPress posts, you can assign them categories which will lump them together with similar posts and it helps your site visitors to easily find similar posts like the, the one that's in the same category. And all posts are in the uncategorized category by default. So let's go back to our dashboard and click on posts. And let's uh, click on categories. Let's add a couple categories first of all. We'll add one called Tutorials, tutorials, add new category, and then I'll add one that's called news. We'll add new category. Now let's click on all posts again. I can delete this one, but we're just going to edit this one instead for our first post. So first of all, let's put in a different title. 
something real clever like my first blog post okay now this is what's called the permalink or the slug and this is what the URL will show up you I'm going to change this to first post click OK and then I will paste in some the content and I'll use the paste from word option well, first I'll highlight this to replace that and then I'll use the paste from word option get rid of those extra spaces here by clicking backspace a couple times and I'm going to click insert into post and I'll click update and go back to our blog page and reload the tab and there we go that's our first post now let's add some visual appeal first of all and we're going to assign it a category so we'll put news and uncheck the uncategorized and then we're also going to set what's called a featured image so let's click on that it's down on the bottom right and I'll use an image I found in on pixabay.com and we'll just click on set featured image now you'll notice right here it says tags now tags are like keywords they're usually one word or two or three word phrases that allow your search engines to categorize in your posts by your your tags or keywords we'll put in a tag called first blog post which of course wouldn't be a a real tag but then and then you put a comma and then put in another tag if you'd like like blog info okay we'll add those tags now we'll click update we'll go back to our blog page and click update and now our image shows up and our first blog post text on your blog page the posts are shown chronologically with the newest post showing first so let's add a post we'll go ahead and add new I'll call this something really creative too like my second blog post and I'll copy and paste in some content from Word again get rid of the extra spacing and we'll click insert oops I forgot I didn't get all the content here downward by the okay now I'll click publish we'll put a category we'll put this one in the news category too and then we'll set a featured image I've got another image that I found on pixabay.com and we'll just click set featured image then we'll click update back to our blog page and reload and now our second blog post shows up at the top. Perhaps you you have a post that you would like to stay at the top so your your blog visitors will see that first. Now there is a way to do that. It's called making your post sticky. Let's click on all posts. Let's make the first blog post what's called sticky. So let's click on quick edit. Check this box here. Make this post sticky and we'll click update. Now we'll reload the blog page. Now you notice it says it's a featured post now. That's what they call a sticky post. So that one will, no matter how many more blog posts you upload on your blog, this one will always be the top post because it's called sticky. Alright, so that's all we're going to cover about blogs in this video. Let's go back, let's go up, and now we're going to configure our contact location page. All right, now for our contact form, since WordPress doesn't have a default contact form, we'll need a plugin. So let's go back to our dashboard and hover over plugins and click on Add New. Now we'll do a search for Contact Form 7, which is the one I use all the time. And we'll just click Install Now. Now this is a very popular plugin. I'm going to activate it. Now we have a contact tab over here on the left. We'll go ahead and click on that. Then we'll just click on the default contact form right here. Now contact form 7 is very customizable and you can use HTML and CSS to make all sorts of forms but even without using all that code it's easy to make many different forms. We'll just be going over how to make a basic website contact form in this tutorial. I'm going to open up pages in a different tab and then open up the contact page. 
First I'm going to paste in a little message blurb here. Make this, well I'll go back to the visual editor first of all. And I'll highlight it again and I'll make this a heading 4 to make it stand out a little bit. And we'll go back to our contact form. Now this is the short code that we need to use right here. Let's go ahead and click on it and then just right click and copy and we'll go ahead and paste it into our contact location page. We'll go ahead and hit update and we'll go back and check out our page as it is right now. Here's our contact form. Now this might be all that you know many of you require but I'll show you a little bit more how to adjust the fields and that sort of thing. Let's go back to our contact form edit page. Now you can change what your text says right here if you want to just have it say name instead of your name or su such and such. And first of all what I do when I make a new field is I just copy one of these fields and then paste it in where I want it. Then I just replace text first of all. I'm going to make this phone number and then over here where it says generate tag we'll click on this arrow to expand it and I'll click on telephone number and I'll just call it a phone now you have a bunch of different optional fields here uh, such as the max length for example that limits the amount of characters that somebody can type into the form but we'll just leave those blank now we'll just get this short code right short, short code excuse me right here I'll go ahead and copy. This has been a long video here, guys. But I tr try to cover as much as I can. Uh, oops, I'm going to highlight this. And go ahead and paste in the phone short code. Down here, click and highlight this short code. And we'll need to put this in the mail form. This message body, this is what you will receive in your email when somebody fills out your contact form. I'll just leave it as is like that and it goes to my email. I'm just going to put my easy WP contact oops, contact and for subject I'll just leave that as is. And we'll go ahead and save and we'll go back to our contact location page and reload the tab and now we have a a phone field where somebody can enter in their phone number if they like and if you want to enter more fields in here you certainly can. The easiest way I found is just to copy and paste this in and then replace the text and the short code with whatever you need. We'll go ahead and try our code out to see how it works. We'll just put in an email. Hey and then hey 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 okay and I'll click send your message was sent successfully I'll go to my email and see if I did receive that there it is right there okay unknown sender that's what it usually says for me there is my message okay so it does work now one other thing we'll configure here I like to configure anyway is right here where it says mail to I like to click check this box what the mail to option does is here is the email of the person that fill out your contact form. It sends a like an autoresponder confirmation email to the person that fills out a form. So it goes to his email. I like to put uh, from from. I'll just put my easy WP. Then subject. I'll put your website inquiry. Then in the message body, I'll type in something. I'll I'll just paste it in here. I've already got it filled out. I like to put in something similar to this. Hi, and then your name. It'll be whatever name they put in there. Thanks for the message. I'll get back to you soon. So it's just kind of like an autoresponder. So they'll receive a, an email along with the confirmation on the contact location page. Okay, I'll go ahead and save that. Now we'll embed a Google map right below our contact form. So the first thing we need to do is go to this URL right here. Go ahead and copy this. I'm going to close this out right here. I'll open up a new tab and we'll go to the Google Maps tab. Then you'll just type in the address of where you want your map to show. I'm going to paste in something actually. Mount Everest in Nepal. So, you know, hey, we shoot for the top, guys. The highest mountain in the world is Mount Everest. Now just click on the little link icon right here. 
Now this is the code we could use, but let's click on this Customize and Preview Embedded Map. Okay, you can have a different map sizes. You can make it a custom size if you'd like. I'll just click on the large and then copy and paste this HTML to embed in your website. So we'll just highlight this HTML code and copy it. Now we'll go back to our edit screen. We need to be in the HTML or text edit screen to paste in the HTML code. So we'll go ahead and paste that code in there. I'll click update. Go back to our contact location page and there we go. We have our map form embedded, our Google Maps. And if you click on the location right here, then someone can get directions, of course, to Mount Everest. It might be a little bit a little bit difficult to drive there, but if your, your location, they, they can click on this and then click and get directions to your location. All righty, we got our site finished up. One more thing we're going to do is just make our site a little bit more secure. Now, you should not have your WP admin username as admin. That's one security step you should have already taken and you should also have a very strong password that's another step you should already have taken care of we're going to add another layer of security to our site so let's go to our dashboard hover over plugins and click on add new we are going to add a plugin called WP better security right here it's real easy to configure but I'll go through the steps for you just to show you how to do it I'll click on search plugins. Now I believe this is probably the most popular security plugin out there. Let's click on the details. It's been downloaded almost a million times. It's been updated almost just a month ago, so it's a really good plugin. Let's click on install now. And we'll activate. Now you notice we have a little tab over on the left called security. Let's click on that create database backup that's a very good idea you notice I have backup buddy installed here now but if you don't have backup buddy or something similar you'll just click on this to create a database backup and it will email the backup the file of the backup to the email address you have on file so I'll click create database backup alright they should email you the database backup now all we'll just need to do is just click on secure my site from basic attacks now you'll notice the sentences in the blue and the green and then the yellow and in the red. The ones in the red are the ones we want to look for. The ones in the blue we are not going to mess with because like it says right down here, items blue are not fully secured but may conflict with other themes, plugins, etc, etc. So we're not going to mess with the ones with the blue. The ones in the green are good. The ones in the yellow we can you're not enforcing strong passwords we'll start with that one we'll fix that one right now click here to fix right now the strong password role is only required for administrators we will require it for everyone subscriber level and above so that's everybody click save changes go back to our little dashboard your WordPress admin is available 24 7 you're not blocking bad hosts or agents I'm just going to leave those two alone your installation is not actively looking for changed files. Click here to fix. We'll click on that one. Enable file change detection. Click check that box. And click save options. And we'll go back to our dashboard. Now if you do see anything else in red that I haven't covered on your site, then go ahead and fix it just by clicking click here to fix and then putting a check in the box and click save options. I'm going to leave everything else as is. Your installation is actively blocking attackers trying to scan your site for vulnerabilities. That's a really good one. And what else do we have here? Actively looking for changed files. So we should be good now. Right, this is the end of the video. Now we've got our site more secure than it was without the better WP security plugin installed. So I hope you learned how to get your own site online, your WordPress site. If you do have any questions, please feel free to ask them in the comment section below the video. And subscribe because I, I will always have new videos coming out. And as always, keep on keeping on. Thanks a lot.